Hello my siblings in Christ! Some time ago I've had an idea to make a video on atheism that would essentially be a collection of atheist pet peeves. It worked like a charm. For a time it was the fastest growing video on this channel. As it was to be expected, it drew the ire of a lot of atheists and some Christians. However, it also drew praise from some other Christians, who said that the video was good. I respectfully disagree. I thought I'd turn this into a learning experience and go through all the arguments I presented in Atheism vs. Science and comment on them. Let us begin. No one commented on the fish hook in the first frame. Like, not one person. I know it's on there for just two seconds, but it's not like it's between two frames. Then I proceed to define atheism as a belief that there is no God. Honestly, I just included this in order to annoy atheists. I know how that rubbed them the wrong way. Majority of the criticism I got on my thoughts on atheism video was me defining atheism as a religious belief. No other reason for the definition. Moving on, I say that the majority of atheists like science just so they could attack religion. That is, that they don't appreciate science on its own merits. This may be true for some atheists, but it is a useless argument. People like religion for the wrong reasons too. People are Christians and leave Christianity for the wrong reasons. Then, I claim that the proofs of God's existence are all around us, but that atheists refuse to see them. This is one of those things that aren't really an argument. No atheist will go, oh wow, you're right, I believe now. As someone said, for a believer, no miracle is needed, and for a non-believer, no miracle will suffice. Here, I also call atheism a religious belief, again, simply to troll the atheists. Now, we come to the sole argument that I do consider good. Why is there something rather than nothing? Is matter eternal or did it come into being? I never saw an atheist provide a good answer to this. I use the term science of the gaps as a tongue-in-cheek reference to God of the gaps, that is, a claim that religious people use God or gods to explain the phenomena that the science hasn't explained yet. This is fine if you're a cave-dwelling troglodyte. However, atheists can and do go in completely opposite direction, and when presented with the issue of existence as opposed to non-existence, they dismiss the question or resort to the science of the gaps. Within the same argument, I say also that, ultimately, a man is no different from a rock in atheism. Sure, some may claim sentience, but then again, why is this one particular characteristic set above all others? Why aren't we vegans all the time? I go on to say that religious people live longer. Again, this is a very bad argument. We are not Christians because we want to live longer. We are Christians because we believe that the Son became incarnate in order to shatter the works of the devil and to put death to death. If you are a Christian and you live in a Muslim theocracy or in atheist China, your religion can have disastrous consequences for your lifespan. Then I call out atheists for using religious holidays to have a day off. This is just petty on my side. Everyone likes a day off and they can't blame atheists for enjoying one for religious reasons. You're welcome, atheists. God loves you. Next, I accuse atheists that they, essentially, don't have an objective moral code. This is where the two viewpoints differ wildly. From a religious point of view, atheists don't have an objective moral code. From an atheistic point of view, neither do religious people. Now we come to one of the more interesting but still bad arguments. I said that atheists want to believe and to be loved by God, but different personal reasons prevent them from doing so. Now, this may be true of some atheists. There are atheists who don't mind the idea of God, of afterlife, of heaven and hell. However, they simply don't believe in God, and no amount of wishful thinking will whisk God into existence. I will use an, an example of something Christians believe in but wish it weren't real. Hell. Let us be honest, we shouldn't like the idea of hell. Even God hates hell. If he didn't, he wouldn't be incarnate and take away the sins of the world. However, despite our dislike of it, we still believe in hell. Speaking of hell, I say that atheists are cruel because they don't believe in supernatural punishment for crimes. I wouldn't know about others, but if I were an atheist, I would be extremely bothered that a lot of truly horrendous crimes will never get a closure. However, the argument is still a bad one, as it is contingent upon God actually existing. Now we get to Hitler and Stalin. What is a good bad argument without mentioning Hitler? I mentioned him on purpose because he wasn't an atheist. He wasn't a Christian, as evidenced by his own admission and as witnessed by his associates, but still not an atheist. Stalin was definitely an atheist and he definitely persecuted religion with a great zeal. However, using him is still a bad argument. A good deal of atheists wouldn't agree to his measures. 
There is, however, one great way to utilize Stalin and similar dictators. If an atheist mentions Inquisition and similar atrocities, then it is a fair game. And if you, as an individual Christian, have to answer for the crimes of the Inquisition, then the opposing atheist should answer for Stalin's and Mao's and Hoxha's crimes as well. What follows is a completely silly argument that most atheists have never heard of Jesus, and would convert if they knew more about him. Now, this may be true in China, but is usually not true when it comes to Western atheists. I follow up with Pascal's wager. If I were an atheist, it would never convince me. I like to compare Pascal's wager to a magical cookie that will grant you anything you wish if you eat it whole, but there's the catch. The cookie is the size of Mount Everest. Pascal wager is the ultimate impractical weapon of religion. I finish the video with a despicable sweetness and guilt tripping. I actually like the granny at the end the most. I won't spoil it for you, but go to the original clip and pay close attention to her eyes. And while you're at it, pay close attention to the little words in the lower left corner throughout the video. You may want to watch it in the full screen to see what I mean. In the end, we are all different. An argument I and majority of atheists consider poor just might work with somebody. Most importantly, remember to pray for atheists. Faith is, above all else, a gift from God, as it says in the epistle to Hebrews. For the word of God is living and powerful, and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. A protestant might interpret this as referring to the Bible, but it refers to Christ, the pre-eternal word of God, the only discerner of hearts. He alone knows why people do not believe, and it is at him we should focus our prayers for conversion, and we should focus our attention on him much more than we focus our attention on the arguments, especially the weak arguments of men, whether those arguments be our own or of others. So, I ask you all, my siblings in Christ, to pray and make the sign of the cross. Christ, you burnt the offering of a righteous man with water, and you sprinkled with dew the three young men amidst the furnace. For all you desire, O Christ, you perform. Look now, O Christ, upon the hearts of those who do not know you, that they may recognize you, the word of God, as true God, who rescues us from the darkness of sin. For you are the truth, the way, and the life, O Christ our God, and to you we offer up glory, with your pre-eternal Father and your holy and life-giving Spirit, now and ever and unto the ages of ages. Amen.